Hi there. Here's a short topic video looking at the distinction between absolute poverty and relative poverty. So absolute poverty, also known as extreme poverty, has been defined by the United Nations, and this definition is 20 years old, but still holds true today, as a condition characterised by severe deprivation of basic human needs, be they food, safe drinking water, sanitation, health, basic shelter, basic education and information. The key thing about absolute and extreme poverty, it can be measured by income, but not just income, also on access to and affordability of services. Just in the last year, the World Bank has recently redefined their absolute or extreme poverty line. So now we track the percentage of the population of a given country living on less than $1.90 per day, purchasing power, poverty adjusted, measured at constant 2011 prices. According to the World Bank, in 2015, just over 700 million people are still living in extreme poverty. That's a lot of, lot of people, but it's now less than 10% of the global population. This chart is interesting. It shows per capita incomes in 2014 adjusted for PPP for African countries. You can see countries in green are effectively middle income nations, Gabon, Botswana, Seychelles, Mauritius, Equatorial Guinea. They've reached that level of income. A whole cluster of countries between $5,000 and $7,000. And then lots of countries in orange, lower middle income countries, uh, between $1,000 US dollars and $5,000 per day. Of course, you can divide by 365 to get the approximate dollar per day figure. And then you have countries in red, very poor countries where their per capita income is still less than a thousand US dollars per year. Divide by 365 to get the equivalent dollar per day. So lots of absolute poverty is still in sub-Saharan Africa. According to the World Bank, the extreme global poverty rate has fallen. The estimated rate in 2015 was just below 10%. 9.6% of the world population, equivalent to just over 700 million people. Of course, that's come down dramatically since uh, 1990 in particular, driven mainly, it has to be said, by the growth of countries such as uh, China and India. And if we look at the percentage, the share of global extreme poverty, we see that, uh, we see that sub Saharan Africa's share of global poverty has gone up. So in 2015, nearly nearly a half of the world's extreme poor will live in sub-Saharan countries. The percentage in East Asian Pacific economies has, of course, collapsed from about 50% down to around 18%. And uh, the South Asian, South Asian economies have also seen an increase in their relative share. That's partly because of the rise of others. What is relative poverty? Relative poverty is probably best defined in relation to the overall income distribution or consumption distribution within a country. So, for example, you could set your relative poverty line at, let's say, 50% of a country's income or 60% of a country's income. Of course, where you set the line determines how many people would be counted as relatively poor. In the UK, the relative poverty line officially is set at household income after tax and benefits, uh, less than 60% of median income. And the income is adjusted for household size. You can also use other relative poverty measures which link to income inequality, such as the Gini coefficient and the Palmer ratio. If we look at the figures for the UK, they have a different measure of absolute income, uh, absolutely low income, because obviously in, because the UK is a developed country. But if you look at relative poverty in the UK, we can see if you follow the, the turquoise line here, that the, since 1998, the percentage of the population before housing costs that are living on less than 60% of median income has actually fallen from about 19% of individuals to about 15%. Now, clearly within that, there will be pockets of severe deprivation, severe poverty, both within certain households, within certain localities, and within regions. This is the UK figure. But actually the data suggests that relative poverty using this measure in the UK has actually edged down a little bit before housing costs in the last 15 or so years. But keep in mind, 
that we're measuring relative income here for many aspects of poverty, the experience of poverty, which are not captured by income by, by spending. So access to sanitation, political safety and security, the quality of schooling, nutrition, all of these things, including things like healthy life expectancy, are important in determining the relative living standards of people. But this has just been a short revision video looking at the distinction between absolute and relative poverty.